Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This month, we're going to be exploring alphabets. For our explorations this month with me, I'm going to be using the Latin alphabet. And if you speak or read English, the alphabet from A to Z is uh, probably the alphabet that you're familiar with. It's also known as the Latin alphabet. And this alphabet is used for multiple languages, French, German, Italian, lots of different languages. I only know the written um, Latin alphabet. I also know the sign language alphabet, but I don't know any other written alphabets. So I'm going to be focusing on the Latin alphabet, but you might know multiple alphabets. You might be learning something in school. You might read or write in a language at home that's different from at school, or you might be learning another language or another alphabet at school. For these explorations, you can use whichever alphabet you want. I thought for our first exploration, we could do something called alphabet selfies. So for this exploration, I have gathered some paper and some mark making tools. Remember, paper doesn't have to be nice and clean and new. It can have marks on it. I love going to my recycling bin and grabbing paper um, for exploration like this because nothing is for keeps. We're going to either throw it out or put it back in the recycling bin when we're all finished. So there's no reason for us to have nice, new, clean paper. The second thing that I've gathered is some mark making tools. For me, when I'm doing uh, explorers, I like to use markers because it shows up really well on my paper for the video. But you can use whatever mark making tools you want. That could be markers, that could be pencils, that could be crayons, that could be lipstick if you have permission. Anything that marks up the page. Under this dotted line here, I've also written scissors. If you've made with me in the past, you know that I love to rip paper. So anytime that we can, um, we have the opportunity to rip up or cut up paper, I'm just going to rip up the paper. But if you have a favorite pair of scissors or you're making with a grown up or another person who feels confident using scissors, you absolutely could use scissors when we get to the point in our exploration where you feel like you want to cut up the page. Okay, let's explore some alphabet selfies. I'm going to put some of these stickies to the side. So we've got some room to make. You know who I am. There we go. Okay. So the quickest and easiest alphabet selfie is your name. This is my name and I wrote it. It is a version of me. Can you draw your name? Did you notice I used the word draw? When you're learning to write, usually people will say, write your name. But here in Explorers, I want you to think about any time you make a mark on the page as being drawing or mark making. So while we might be writing our name, what we're also doing is mark making our name. And when we write our name, there are certain kinds of rules that we follow. We want it to be legible, as in we want people to be able to read it. We want it to be clear. We tend to follow very specific rules of how to do our letters because we want other people to understand. There's an agreement that this is what an A looks like. And so somebody can read it like an A. And this is what a Y looks like. And this is what a K looks like. 
But even within that agreement, we have some leeway, right? We have some um, opportunity to change up this letter and still have it be understood as a K, right? So if I was going to do block letters, or I was going to do cursive letters, or I was going to do a dotted line version of the letter. These are all still K's, right? How many ways when you write your name, can you draw your name and still have it look like your name? Let's take a minute and fill up one of our pages by seeing how many different ways we can write our name and still have it look like our name. Ready, set, draw. Okay, a couple more times. If you're running out of ideas, you're totally welcome to copy me. You totally have my permission. Okay. If you want to keep drawing your name on your page, go for it. If you're all done and you want to follow along with me, how many different ways did you come up with drawing your name? Are they the same as mine? Are they completely different? What tool did you use? If you were going to use a different tool, how would it change your name? Would it still be your name? What about the colors you chose? If you chose a specific color because it was available, what would happen if you were to write it in your favorite color or your least favorite color? How does it feel to use different tools to draw your name? Are some tools more comfortable than others? Are some tools less comfortable than others? Have you tried writing your name using different parts of your body? So I'm right-handed, but what about drawing with your non-dominant hand? What if you used your entire hand? What if you used your mouth? <laughs> you want to make sure that if you're using your mouth that you clean it up after, uh, clean your tool up afterwards or you have permission before you do that but this is these are my tools and I will clean this one up afterwards but how you make your mark it says a lot about how it appears on the page and this is really personal because it's our name when somebody else writes your name it doesn't look like your handwriting it doesn't look like your gesture. Somebody else did it. They're doing a version of your name. But this is really personal. This is you. This is your name. And so however you express it, however you draw it on the page, is an extension of you. It came from your body. It's one of your marks. So this is a really easy way to start practicing alphabet selfies because we already have some kind of emotional connection to our name. We know that when we see our name on the page, that that 
means us. Well, what happens when we take our name and we pull it apart? So here, I'm gonna use another piece of paper. And I'm gonna write my name pretty big. And if you only have the first piece of paper that you were using, you can totally just pick one of the words or one of your, um, one of your drawings of your name from the page you just finished. I'm just doing a clean new one because it's easier to see. And I'm gonna do it all in caps this time. All in capital letters. Okay. So when I was drawing this, and if you're drawing your name as well, what do you notice about the marks that you put on the page? For me, I had nothing but straight lines because I did this all in capitals. And I have lots of straight lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different lines. It still means K, even though I've also said it also means nine different lines. What else could it mean? All right, I do love ripping paper. So let's try and take one of our names off the page. And same thing on the page where you were uh, drawing your name. If you want to cut out or rip it out from that page, that's totally okay too. There we go. All right. So right now in this order, it still means our name. What happens if we cut apart our name. What do you notice? I still see my name. I still see my name. Because it's in this order, and that's how I read and say my name, K-A-Y-K, this is almost always gonna mean K. Just like when I was drawing on the other page and I had some of my letters were bigger and some of my letters were in slightly different spaces, because I read left to right or up to down, Whenever they're in this order, this means me. But what if I change that order? Does that still mean me? When you change the letter, the order of your letters, does it still mean you? Well, I drew these letters and I chose this kind of paper to use, and I chose the marker. So it might mean K to me, but it might not mean K to somebody else. Let's do it one more time. What about now? Well, now I've changed the letters to actually read Y-A-K, which is another word yak, which is an animal. But if we were to read my name from right to left, K-A-Y, well then I'm still there. I'm still in these letters. I'm still in this word. Even though everyone else, when they come here, if they read English or read the Latin alphabet, will probably read yak. So it means something different to me than it does to someone else. So there are certain things that we have agreements with in art. So when you're learning to write using the Latin alphabet or English, um, this means K. It has a certain sound when you say it, K. There's a capital, there's a lowercase letter. 
there are things that people recognize as true so that we can communicate, so that we can have things in common, so that we can work from that common knowledge over. But there are also things that you know are true. And just because somebody else might not read your name or your picture or your mark in the same way you do, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean um, a specific something to you. It just means you have to work harder and you have to do more things before somebody else will recognize it. You might have to do some explanation. So if I had somebody come over to my studio and see this and I asked them what they saw, they would probably first think about things that um, they and I have in common, which is we read English and the letters from left to right read yak. And so they would see yak. And I would have to say, well, I drew these letters and I wanted for this project or this exploration for you to read right to left. And they would go, oh, so now I know the new rules. So I know that I'm supposed to read K-A-Y. So it was my rules I had to tell someone else. And when we're exploring, we really do get to make our own rules. We're exploring what happens if. So what happens if I ask somebody to read everything from right to left? What about this? What happens if you were to flip some of the letters in your name? Does it still mean you? Is it still your name? Is it correct or right or is it wrong? What makes it wrong or right? I know that it's K-A-Y. Even though my A is upside down, I know that it's the letter A upside down. So it still means A. And now that I'm looking at it like this, I see this triangle that I didn't really notice. When it was like this, it was hard for me to notice because I see the letter A. But when I flip it over, I notice a triangle. Is this still my name? Can you take pieces of your letter apart and have it still mean you? Give it a shot. What do you notice? Is it still your name? Can you still read it? Could somebody else read it? How much would you have to tell somebody else before they could read it as your name? If somebody was to come up and just see this right now, they might see these lines looking like these and there's still a little bit of a line at the bottom of my triangle. So that still kind of looks like an A. So they might read this as V-A-V, -V, VAV. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, but they recognize these letters as something that we would know in common. So that's how they might read this word. But now that we're starting to take our letters apart, what else do you notice? What if they weren't letters or weren't words anymore? Try jumbling the parts of the letter that you've ripped up now on the space in front of you. What do you notice? I notice that I have a lot of straight lines here. And that when I rip up my letters into even smaller pieces, they're getting closer to that thing I said earlier. Remember how I said that my name is also, I can't remember if I said nine or 10, um, 10 straight lines. 
Well, I don't actually want to cut my A up smaller than the triangle. I like that triangle. Oh, and then this one right here as well. Now that I've ripped this apart, is this still my name? You came from my name. You saw my name before. Before you ripped up your page, you saw your name. It was your name. So this could still be your name. You know it's your name. If somebody else came along and saw it, you might have to do even more steps to explain to them now how it's your name. It was a piece of paper that I picked. It was a marker that I chose. It was my name that I drew. And I made the decision to rip up the page so it looks like this. These pieces are my name. And then somebody could go, oh, okay, I understand the story of what happened. I didn't see what happened. I needed to be told what happened before I could understand. So if this is me, what can it become now that it doesn't look like letters? I still know it's me. I still know it's my letters. Or sorry, I still know it came from my letters. How can I make this into something else that represents me? Take a second and look at the lines or the um, marks that you ripped up from drawing your name and see what you have in common with the lines on the page. Let's take a minute and move them around. You can do whatever you want, but then let's come back in a minute and see what we did. Did you make something out of the lines and marks that you made from your name? What did you make? I made a picture of my face. I'm gonna go, actually I'm gonna go like this. There we go. And I can keep trying and moving it around as I make. But there's my mouth and there are my eyes. And this is the outline of my face. And I made this from my name, from the alphabet, from the letters I picked. And so now I have my alphabet selfie, my self-portrait, a picture of me made from my name. There are lots of different ways you can explore using the alphabet in your art making and your play. And this week, we just explored one. I hope to see you again next week as we continue to explore alphabets. We've also explored alphabets in the past, and you can check out previous episodes where we explore alphabet on our uh, YouTube page, youtube.com slash artstarts, on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash artstarts, or on our website, artstarts.com slash explores dash online. Like I like to do every week, I'm going to take a minute to clean up my space so that we're ready to go so we can explore together next week. I look forward to exploring with you then. Bye for now.